Hi, and welcome to the Facts and Firearms blog and podcast, episode number two, originally aired on February 21st, 2020. And today I'm joined by my good friend, Evan Crowley. Evan, you want to tell the good folks what you do here at Faxon? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm Evan Crowley. I'm part of the sales team here at Faxon Firearms. Um, I'm the national account manager. Um, so basically my day-to-day is managing and talking with dealers, um, account level stuff, signing up new dealers, things like that. So really from the the, the dealer portion top down, I, uh, I have a hand in it. So Excellent. Excellent. So before we get into today's topic, Evan's actually going to talk to us about what it's like being a dealer for Faxon, yeah. kind of how to get started um, and things that you can expect. So if you are a, you know, an enthusiast that's looking to become a dealer or you have a small shop and maybe you've just been buying our stuff full blown retail and, yeah. you know, which was actually surprising when we were at SHOT Show, yep. we had several folks come up to us and, and say like, yeah, we use your stuff in our builds. And I'm like, well, oh, so you're set up as a dealer with us. Yeah. They're like, oh no, we just buy from blah, blah, blah. I was it's like, so easy. I was like, why are you buying? Yeah. <laughs> Don't, don't buy full-blown retail. You yeah. get great pricing. Definitely. First thing, though, I wanted to talk about is we are doing a giveaway right now. We have a few days left on it. Uh, we started this uh, over Valentine's weekend, but we are giving away one of our match series barrels. We're giving away the 14.5-inch Gunner 223 Wild. Um, the thing that some people don't know is that our barrels fall into two different categories when it comes to uh, rifle barrels. We have our... Um, duty series and we have what's called our match series. This happens to be in our match series. I'll open this guy up. For those of you just listening and not watching the video, this is great radio where I describe how something looks. Yeah. So one of the things you'll see is uh, the nickel Teflon extension underneath the red cap. So that'll be the the main thing when you, if you're just looking at it on a shelf to be able to tell it apart from maybe something in our duty series. Wait, was that Android operating system or is that Siri? I don't know. I think I think my iPad may have just talked to us from my desk. Oh, Anywho, but, so that's one of the ways that you could tell it apart uh, if you're just taking a look at it on the shelf. But the duty series barrels are going to be in that 4150 CMV steel. Uh, this is going to be 416R. Duty series has standard rifling and then the match series has 5R rifling. So if you're not familiar with that, we actually have a little infographic that I'll put in the notes for today's episode, uh, just about the differences between the two series of barrels and especially about the rifling. To get uh, in the giveaway, just visit factsandfirearms.com and it'll pop up as soon as you get to the uh, as soon as you get to the site. And there's a ton of different ways that you could enter sharing it on everything from Facebook to Pinterest to, you know, what have you. Tons of ways to enter. So make sure you get signed up for that. And uh, we'll, we'll get that out to the winner in a few days. But with Evan here, I wanted to talk again just a bit about what it's like to be a dealer, things you could expect, how we do pricing things like that. So if you want to tell us what I mean, it's like. The, it, it, it was really surprising when we were at SHOT Show and the amount of people, you know, as we were just talking about before, it, because the the setup and process of becoming a dealer with us, if you're, you know, an FFL um, or if you're a licensed business, you don't even have to be an FFL to, to be a dealer with us because we deal in a lot of um, uncontrolled parts like barrels, um, different parts and accessories. So the process is is really, really, really straightforward and easy. And really, it goes back to that website where they go to enter for the giveaway. Mm -hmm. There's a little button at the top and it says become a dealer. Um, you just click on it and it just say basic information section. The more information that you put in there, the better. Usually it's just one or two lines want yeah. to be a dealer. So, mm -hmm. But that still gives me enough information to go off of contact info. Um, and then I reach out, couple back and forth between some information. And then we go ahead and turn you live as a dealer. Um, we have three different dealer tiers. The The pricing kind of varies based on where you want to come in at a dealer. You know, we have everything that can, you know, service full stocking dealers. And then if somebody wants to just become a dealer and, and try the parts out and order one or two barrels to see what they can do, because maybe they're not that shop that really specializes in parts. Um, they can really just, you know, get in with us with one or two barrels or one gun, you know, yeah. the, our new complete rifle lineup that we launched at SHOT Show is doing extremely well for us. And, you know, there's, um, it makes sense for us and it makes sense for a lot of our customers, but shops really know us as that parts and accessories. So that natural progression into, we make all of these things, we're going to tie them together and we're going to put it into a complete rifle lineup. 
it just made sense for us. So right. if somebody is really just finding out that we have complete guns, know us more for parts, you can get in with us one gun, that's fine. And then we can grow that business relationship. Um, but the communication aspect of it, you know, we're always willing to communicate with dealers, answer questions, comments, concerns. Um, we have a pretty small shop here. So being able to talk to anybody that you would need to is, is it, we're pretty accessible. So, and one of the things that, you know, we got to mention to new dealers at SHOT Show who thought that maybe they couldn't become one was they thought that we were going to have crazy minimums. Right. Right. You know, and, and there are, there's a lot of manufacturers for good reason who, who have certain minimums, but we, we, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no minimum first order, correct? Yeah, to yeah. get started. So we have a, we have several, like I said, we have several different dealer tiers um, and they, you know, the, the, the margins and the pricing varies, but for the most part, there are, you know, dealer tiers that you can get into that have no minimums like that one or one barrel, that one gun customer that wants to come in with us. But then, you know, obviously, you, you know, the, more you buy, the more that you can save. Um, it's a natural progression with sales. Um, so like I said, it's a, it's a very straightforward process. And really to just kick it off, all you have to do is just go to the website, faxandfirearms.com, become a dealer in the top right-hand corner, mm -hmm. fill out the inquiry. I get that personally, go through it, and then you'll be hearing from me. Um, so we'll send out a couple of emails, like I said, very straightforward process. And then we get everything launched from there. Yeah. And one of the things that kind of separates us from some other manufacturers uh, on the sales side mm -hmm. is that with dealers, we do enforce map pricing. Correct. And so could you take a minute and just explain, number one, what map pricing is? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then also, you know, kind of what that, how that benefits yeah, the dealer. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of retailers, I mean, I'm sure most of retailers are, are familiar with map, but uh, minimum advertised pricing. Um, and basically that's us setting the standard for how low our prices can be shown and advertised at a sale price. Um, so what that means is for a dealer who comes in and they're a smaller shop, they're wanting to get a couple guns in, um, but they know that the, some of the dot coms that are out there, they can log on there and somebody will come in and look at a gun and they'll be like, well, I can get this gun cheaper down the street. That customer then looks and they're like, oh my God, they, this person's buying this gun or selling this gun for cheaper than what I can actually get it for at my dealer price. How can I ever make money? Right. You know, what, how can I hold my margins and protect that? And with small businesses nowadays, you know, that's, it's a, it's a very big focus, small Unfortunately, you see a lot of smaller businesses starting to go away because, you know, the big dot coms and things like that are, are somewhat, you know, cornering the market and what they're able to buy and their buying power. But with minimum advertised pricing, it's protecting that price to allow, you know, the smaller dealers to continue to sell their guns and puts the bigger dot coms in the same same categories. Yeah, um, I think that's the most appropriate way to uh, to say that. But um, really, it's just protecting, you know, everybody at the same playing level. So everybody can kind of get out there and generate their own business. Yeah. And I mean, the the thing that I've noticed just even on the consumer side is you get a lot of people and, and I guess it's not just in the firearms industry, but you get a lot of people who will go to the gun shop and like pick one up, try one out but then they go and order it online, right. you know, so they, they want to go and see it in person, mm -hmm. uh, and then go, go get the cheaper price, yeah. you know, like you said, at, at some larger box, um, uh, online store. And now don't get me wrong. Like we're all about e-commerce. Yeah. We have an e-commerce side to us. We have <clears throat> plenty of dealers that yeah. deal in e-commerce. So it's, it's not about that. It's just about making sure that everybody gets the same opportunity right with our products. Yeah. So whether it's just brick and mortar or just e-commerce mm -hmm. or both, you know, it's something that's truly enforced. So, you know, some random big box can't come in and, you know, buy 10,000 of something and, Absolutely. and, and make tons of money on each sale and then just kind of run, uh, you know, the mom and pops down the, down the street from being able to actually make a profit on, Absolutely. on our products. Um, is one of the things that also makes it easy is that they can refill orders online, right? It's Absolutely. not like, yeah, it's yeah. not like they, you know, dealers with us have to make a call, send mm -hmm. a PO or whatever. I mean, obviously we could do traditional things, correct? but you know, they could fulfill orders yeah. online yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, um, I love to talk to my dealers. I love when people want to talk to me, but you know, if you want to ever just jump online and order a barrel and it's in stock and it's available, that's the quickest and easiest way to process an order. But if there's ever, you know, we have a, a lot of in-demand products. We're constantly in, pro in production of all of our top SKUs, all of our products. Um, but if there's ever an opportunity or ever a chance that there's something that's out of stock, that's when they can, you know, communicate with me. We do have a dealer back order sheet. Um, it's utilized by, you know, 
the a, a lot of our dealers, but there are some people who I think are still unaware that that's available out there. Um, and basically what that is, is it's a placeholder for you to reserve inventory. Um, as I said, we're, we're constantly in production and we constantly daily. I mean, I've probably gotten, you know, five or six emails this morning of products that we've received in and are going to be on the shelves and we're going to be shipping out. Um, and some of those items were backordered. So we, we go down that backorder list. We don't prioritize anybody over the next person. If you come on there and you're wanting one barrel and the next person down here wants five barrels, we're going to get rid of that one barrel. And then if we have four or whatever, we, so we prioritize it based on how everybody comes in. Um, so yeah, so that's a, it's a great way to, uh, be able to reserve inventory and we give you a call personal and then we uh, collect payment at that time. Yeah, that's, that's great. And like, like uh, Evan said, constantly in production, especially with the kickoff of the new full rifle Absolutely. line. And so on. We're I, doing I, great. We're, we're blown away some by people, Yeah, so. some people are getting itchy like, yeah. oh, when's it going to be available? We were talking about PCCs being in production right now uh, earlier this morning. And mm -hmm. so uh, things are coming along and uh, some have already begun to ship to different dealers, uh, but you know, the kind of the larger masses and, and when they hit our retail site, uh, you know, will be coming up soon. One of the last things I wanted to ask you about was some of our um, dealer support packages. Yeah. And so this is something where, you know, we want to show that we're interested in the relationship with you because we truly are. Um, not only do you get, you know, enforced map, good pricing, the ability to talk to someone, the ability to refill orders online, but also you can buy into with, I, I believe, minimum purchase amounts, uh, three different dealer support levels yeah. that range from everything from getting some stickers and swag and flags and whatever in your office, all the way to us coming and doing a range day with you. Yeah. Um, so what's kind of that like, you know, doing a range day with a, with a, yeah. you know, with a retailer or range or, or things like that? It's a great question. It, it, I mean, it's, it's kind of the, the, the focus of facts. And as you know, we wanted to support, you know, the, the brick and mortar retail stores. Um, we very much recognize that it's very important that the other side of the counter has the buy-in and believes in the products that they're selling. Um, Faxon, I mean, as everyone knows, we've, we've done a really great job of establishing a very core group of customers, um, that are, you know, very about our brand. Um, but there are still people out there that, that don't really know us as much. So, um, having that person on the other side of the counter that can really advocate and, you know, talk to the features and the benefits and the value that they're getting out of the Faxon products is very important to us. Um, and one of the ways that we're doing that is with the dealer support packages. So being able to come out and do a range day. Um, you know, have your customers being able to advertise that through our social media or sending that out through emails from us into your core area, letting people in the area know like, hey, Faxon's going to be at this shop in, you know, Ann Arbor, Michigan, or, you know, Huntsville, Alabama. Um, and then to have those people be able to get that access um, because we all, we, you know, we live in, in this industry and, and we know what it's like to go to shot and the yeah. accessibility that you can get to manufacturers and things like that. Um, for most people, that's just not a reality. Um, so being able to get out there and come to a range day, being able to try before you buy, if they're a range and being able to shoot, or even if they're just a general retail store, we'd love to come out, you know, train up your staff and then have your, you know, customers come in and we'd be more than happy to talk specs, talk builds, right. talk, you know, price points, any of those things. Well, and, and the other piece that goes along with it, depending on what level you get in on, you do have the opportunity to have us help you a little bit on the marketing side. Absolutely. Um, things like targeted posts, uh, email blasts, uh, things of that variety. So at, at each different level, um, you kind of have some different things that are available to you. If you're interested in learning more about those levels, we'll get uh, Evan's uh, home Address, Home address up on, on um, the uh, like all, <laughs> up on the all old interwebs. Just search the Googles. No, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get uh, Evan's uh, email address, and so you can uh, contact him uh, and ask about all that kind of stuff. We have great literature on it that, that you could take a look at that, yep. uh, uh, that could be available anytime. But also just see, you know, what what's the scope of this? You know, we're interested. You don't have to have any minimums. Uh, you don't have to be like a certain dollar amount type shop to get started. But obviously, as you move up, you get more and more incentives. And as you move up, you get more and more help um, from us to, to really make it uh, a, a really good marketing and product move for your business. Absolutely. I mean, we're looking we're looking to build, you know, business relationships and working relationships with our customers. Um you know, Faxon is that approachable brand. I mean, if you're ever able to get to the opportunity to go to like, um, I'd say the most accessible show would be the NRA. 
Mm -hmm. um, being able to come out and talk to Dustin and Kurt and Pat and Bob Faxon and, and you know, the, the core team that's here at Faxon Firearms. Um, you'll see that, you know, it's it's just not just talk, that we really live it and, and we try and do our best every day to, to really put ourselves out there as that approachable brand that provides, you know, quality value products. Um, that's at that price point. We're easy to work with the, with the dealers. And the, the best thing to, to do would be to go to faxandfirearms.com yeah. and that become a dealer, top right-hand corner, um, fill out the inquiry. You know, if you could give a little bit of information, you know, want to be dealer, that's fine. That's cool. If that's all you want to put on there, I'm still going to reach out to you the same way. Um, but if I can get a little bit of, you know, information that definitely helps me up, gives me a little bit of talking points, prepares my, my conversation of where we're going to go and, and kind of how to steer the conversation. Um, but then if anybody has any direct questions, comments, concerns, anything, Evan at faxandfirearms.com, mm -hmm. um, E-V-A-N. So, I mean, that's that's really a, a really straightforward way to go. And um, from there, you know, if I start getting inundated with customer service questions, I can help you get to those right people too. So we just want to be approachable. We want to provide really great quality products. We're trying to constantly push innovation. Um, you can see that with our you know rifle lineup, the value that's there, the features that are there, the new barrels that we're launching with the integral barrels. So we're always trying to push the envelope, whether it's just self-accountability, business-wise, trying to be approachable, cultivate dealers and relationships, and then push the boundaries with our products. Yeah, for sure. Evan, thank you for your time, yeah, man. Thanks, Appreciate it. Yeah, man. This is All fun. Right. I'd be way more comfortable if I had some snacks. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you could grab some snacks. <laughs> you have Japanese Kit Kats? Those are going to be given out to everyone at some point in time later. Along with that other bag of uh, toys. Toys? What is this? Yeah, it's like Chinese pepperoni. Chinese pepperoni. No, I don't, I don't <laughs> want these Chinese pepperonis. I'm, I'm just being facetious about something. <laughs> Next up, special thing this week two guests so we saw evan and then this is uh, my office mate jay so me jay and the director of marketing kurt staubach all sit in this like uh i'll call it an executive suite yeah it's not <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's what i'll call it but anyway this is jay wilson jay do you want to tell the folks what you do here at faxon uh i'm the director of product management yeah. And so Jay gets to also answer a lot of my questions when we get, you know, social media comments or things where there's there's stuff about just the kind of the engineering or the why uh, we made a certain product the way we did or, or things of that variety. He's always super helpful with that. And, and Jay, right next to you is one of our integral barrels. Yeah. And so we launched these fourth quarter of 2019, I, I believe before I was here, we announced that we were going to be making them, right? Yeah. At like SHOT Show 2019 or something. I think it was NRA Show 2019. Okay. So the thing about the integral barrels that we've been noticing is, number one, as soon as they went on our website for retail sale, I mean, in the first weekend, like we, we released them like a Friday afternoon and before the weekend was over, like three SKUs were sold out. And so we've, you know re-upped our stock and everything so that as we're recording this they are in stock we have them available for 5.56 five, and uh nine millimeter pcc but there's been kind of like a conversation of a lot of people going oh my god i've needed this this is so great and then there's still a lot of people like just asking why you know why do they exist what is the you know what is kind of the perks or maybe the downfalls what could you do with them uh, so Jay, if you want to mind getting into real quick, what I think is probably the, the biggest piece is the, how it helps people get to their minimum barrel length requirement, um, you know, before the, before the muzzle device. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the target market on these is people who are looking for, uh, the shortest, uh, barreled rifle they can legally build. And, you know, this is a solution for that. You know, this is a 14 and a half inch of rifled barrel with an additional inch and a half of muzzle device on the end. Yeah. You know, taking them to that 16 inch legal limit. The other piece that I think has been great about the integral line is it's found its way with the lightweight folks. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, for the 5.56, five, and I'll hold, hold this up here. This is the gunner profile, I believe, of the 5.56, five, yeah. but uh, with a three-port break. But, you know, our pencil barrels have always been known as being some of the lightest and yet still most stable things on the market. But the lightweight crowd, like, 
the fact that they don't have to do a threaded muzzle device and the fact that they don't have to do a pin and weld, uh, it's shaved. Like when you're counting down to individual grams, yeah, it makes a difference. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So there, it has been found, uh, found for that. And then we made the decision to put the integral pencil on our ion ultralight. Yeah. Yeah. We had been using a pin and weld barrel, but we replaced it with these, you know, the, the integral line is, uh, replacing our entire pin and weld line. Yeah. And I mean, with the integral line, like some, <laughs> so when we first launched it, I remember some people were like, well, will the gas block fit over it? And wouldn't that be silly <laughs> if we released a line of barrels with integral muzzle devices and the gas blocks didn't fit? That'd be silly. Yeah. We promise the gas blocks fit. Um, so that's number one. And number two, we we have been asked, are we going to do other calibers? Are we going to do other profiles and things? And, and Jay, something I hear you say a lot when we talk about product is, you know, we, we gauge market demand. Yeah, it's, it's all about market and customer demand. You know, I mean, we're open to... Uh, all sorts of expansions of product line or, or new product line, but um, there has to be a demand for it. You know, yeah. we have to have customers writing in about it. We have to hear that the market as a whole can support it. So, yeah, for sure. So the last question about integral barrels that we get a lot uh, and sometimes on a, on a Facebook or Instagram comment, it'll just say, uh, it'll just say suppressor question mark. Um what's yeah no. no i mean it's it's a muzzle device integral to the barrel without threads uh this is not you know a, a piece for uh a crowd that wants to run suppressor you know we have we have a lot of options that are we have yeah. a lot of different skews uh different barrel lengths caliber options that will be great on your suppressed build this isn't it you know nice feature about it is you know, because it's integral, this this doesn't, uh, you know, get into any of the, you know, the ambiguous statements on the ATF about, you know, how to how to pin and weld. Yeah. You know, the, the ATF covers uh, a lot of methods on how to permanently attach a muzzle device, you know, but they don't lay out any rules on how to test that, how to verify that. And, you know, the fact that this is integral to the barrel itself... Um, you know, really eliminates all of that ambiguity. You know, there is no testing if your if your weld is good enough. You know, yeah. is there a pin in there? Did the silver solder take? You know, there's, you know, the the ATF lays out some some ways you might attach them, mm -hmm. but is uh, <laughs> really not <laughs> forthcoming in you know how you can verify that. And so, um, you know, one of the nice things about that is is it just eliminates all of that. So I guess that's really kind of the, the three things that really helps alleviate some tension for somebody who's interested in a in one of our integral barrels because we've now brought up uh, minimum barrel length. Yeah. We've brought up uh, lightweight for the folks who dig lightweight and want to shave grams. And also, like you were saying, the, the ambiguity of the rules of the pin and weld, you know, on a government level. Yeah. Right. And so also, too, I mean, I'm sure you could find as many fail va videos on YouTube as you want of muzzle devices blowing off and all that kind of junk. That's not going to happen here on the engineering side. Like, how does this come in? How does this start? I mean, this starts as just like raw steel yeah, stock, it's, like it's we always just, get, right? It's all just bar steel stock. Yeah. And so and again, this there's no seam. You know, there's nothing that you could see here that would, you know, make anybody question whether or not it's integral. I mean, it is obviously as you look through the profile, that is all all just one piece. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's going to be no uh, uncomfortable taking it out of the range and, you know, hoping that, you know, anybody who sees it understands that that's a weld spot on the bottom of it. You know, yeah. and this is permanently attached. And no, I don't have, you know, an illegal short barreled rifle. You know, this is this is integral to it. And, you know, I mean, that's, that's a fear I've always had at, at ranges, you know, with, with a short barreled rifle. Uh, I mean, with a, you know, pin and weld barreled rifle is, yeah. you know, Hey, this is permanently attached. You know, yeah. if I did, you know, grind over the weld spot and, you know, put some re black on it, you know, just to make it look nice. Right. Or you know, it's sort yeah. of an uncomfortable feeling, you know, wanting to make sure that, you know, nobody thinks that you have an illegal short barreled rifle. Yeah, for sure. And the integral barrels, they do fall. We were talking a little earlier in the show about our 223 Wild barrel giveaway. 
Um, you know, the this particular one that we're giving away is in our match series, but technically our integral barrels fall under our duty series. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. So the duty series is going to be 4150 CMV steel, right? And traditional rifling. Yeah. Um, and whereas, you know, the match series is going to have that uh, nickel Teflon extension 5R and it's going to be the, the 416R, correct? Yeah. On the steel. He's quizzing me. I had all this memorized for SHOT Show, but I'm just a marketing guy. <laughs> yeah, Jay, thank you so much for your time. If you're interested in checking out the Integral Barrels, just go to factsandfirearms.com. You could click Barrels and you'll see Integrals in one of those pop-downs. And uh, again, not for your suppressor. Okay, but I think you'll love it if uh, you want to make sure you get to that minimum barrel length. Don't have to deal with the pin and weld. Or if you're building a lightweight, this is going to be a great thing for you. Thanks for checking out the Facts and Firearms blog and podcast. Our episodes are recorded at our office and production facility in Cincinnati, Ohio. We would love for you to subscribe, rate, and comment on your favorite podcasting app. You can also follow us on social media. Find us on Facebook and Instagram at Facts and Firearms, on Twitter at Facts and underscore Firearms, and on Pinterest at Pinterest.com slash Facts and Firearms. For today's episode and article and a backlog of articles and episodes, visit FactsandFirearms.com slash blog. As always, you could find out more about our products, sales, and other information at FactsandFirearms.com.